The village of Kinderdijk, beloved for its rich history and culture, is a must-see for tourists visiting South Holland. Located a mere nine miles from Rotterdam, Kinderdijk is home to the oldest collection of Dutch windmills in the Netherlands, quietly nestled away in the meeting place of the Lek and the Noord rivers. With plenty of tours and activities to keep you busy, it's impossible not to get swept up in the folklore surrounding this singularly stunning countryside retreat. Innovations in waterworking, tales of ravaging storms, and heroic rescues, and masterful feats of architecture are just a few of the wonders that punctuate the storied history of this otherwise sleepy town. Established as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1997, Kinderdijk has become a bucket list destination for those looking to experience something truly unique from the hustle and bustle of the city of Rotterdam. Thank you for visiting Via Travelers. Subscribe to our channel for thorough and informative destination updates from all over the world. If you're planning a trip to the Netherlands, we've got you covered in terms of where to go and what to see. In this video, I'll be talking you through the best tours and activities in Kinderdijk, as well as how to get there and how much you can expect to spend. Established in 1421, Kinderdijk forms part of the municipality of Moorlandlanden, and is home to the world's oldest and most breathtaking collection of traditional 18th century Dutch windmills. The village's name, which directly translates to children's dyke, is derived from a legend in which a baby is said to have washed ashore in a cradle made from wood. Accompanied only by a cat, the child was unharmed, despite being caught in one of history's greatest floods, St. Elizabeth. This tale inspired the world-famous children's story, The Cat and the Cradle, and that terrible song that I can't remember the name of. Floods have always played a significant role in Dutch history, given the Netherlands' unique geography. Polders, which are low-lying areas of land reclaimed from large bodies of water, endure extreme difficulties in times of climate-related crises. Consequently, dikes and canals are built to combat the havoc caused by natural water disasters like storms and floods. It makes perfect sense that the Dutch are experts at handling water, with two-thirds of the country lying below sea level. The polder in which Kinderdijk resides is called Alblasservard. In 1740, the townspeople erected a monumental 20 windmills to prevent the village from becoming engulfed by water. This ingenious feat of architecture ensured that water levels remained stable by draining excess water into reservoirs, thereby keeping the polder sufficiently dry. Today, 19 of these windmills remain, and they are guaranteed to exceed your expectations. While a day trip to Kinderdijk won't disappoint, a week is even better. With so much to see and learn, it's no surprise that this village has become increasingly popular with tourists over the years. Before we dive into the activities you can plan for your itinerary, you'll be pleased to learn that most tours cost less than 10 euros and start at around 4 euros. The best way to get to Kinderdijk is to fly into either Rotterdam or Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, where a short car or bus trip will take you straight into the town. We'll go into more detail about this shortly. Affordable dorm accommodation starts at around 25 to 40 euros, but this increases depending on the standard of your overnight stay and whether or not you factor in breakfast and other meals. The main reasons visitors are attracted to Kinderdijk are its picturesque scenery and in-depth history of water management. It really is every photographer's dream and looks just as good in real life as it does on film. Of course, it's good to prepare in advance so you know what to expect to see when you get there. Are you wondering what to do at Kinderdijk? As mentioned, the Kinderdijk windmills are a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which in itself is enough of a reason to visit. The oldest windmill in Kinderdijk, an absolute must-see, is called Blocker. It first surfaced in the history books in the early 16th century. Today, only two of Kinderdijk's 19 windmills are open to the public for visiting inside. While you can photograph the rest, they are used as private residences. The two windmills you can tour are named Blokveer and Nedervaard. While these structures were built for the purpose of managing water, they were also used by the village people to communicate news and events. Marriages, births and deaths were commemorated by raising the windmill's sails. During town festivities, the windmill operators would decorate them with colourful ribbons and flags. Apart from the windmills, you can also take historical tours of the town's pumping stations. On your visit to Kinderdijk, there are four sites you have to see, starting with the two windmills that are open to the public. 
The Blockveer Museum Mill, erected in 1630, showcases the village's unique history. This is a fun trip for the whole family, where traditionally dressed millers take you on a guided tour of the building while explaining its inner workings. Free roaming goats are sure to keep the kids entertained while mum and dad soak in the picturesque scenery. The Nedervard Museum Mill offers an even more in-depth look at life back in the windmill's heydays. For generations, this mill was inhabited by the Hook family. You'll find items from their daily lives on display, as well as collections of authentic photographs. This is also the best spot to get up close and personal with the windmill's expansive and impressive sails. Intrigued? Another great spot to visit is De Fabrique, Kinderdijk's secondary pumping station. Here, a multi-screen filming experience will fill you in on the town's history via an innovative virtual tour available in multiple languages. If you have questions about the cat and the cradle story, this is the place to go and find out more. Personally, I couldn't get enough of the Visbom pumping station. While no longer in operation, a tour of the original engine room gives you a real feeling of what things were like back in the day. There is even a miniature tabletop game where you can experiment with flooding polders and trying to drain them yourself with tiny homages to the famous windmills. You'll feel like you've travelled back in time to 1868 when the pump house was erected. You have quite a few options for getting to Kinderdijk, which is remarkably accessible for even novice travellers. Renting a car at the airport is one option, but be warned that you may have to spend some time looking for parking if you're taking a day trip to Kinderdijk from Amsterdam. That said, it's worth the effort considering how close this lovely town is to Rotterdam and Schiphol. If you're not keen to drive, you can also take a bus, as there are plenty of connections from neighbouring towns and airports, with trips scheduled throughout the day. For travellers that aren't in a hurry, there's also the option of booking a trip on a water bus. This unique mode of transport takes you via the Netherlands' famous canal systems straight to the village. I recommend taking this trip to Kinderdijk from Rotterdam, where you can also rent a bike to complete your journey to and from the docking areas. Even so, for the full experience, I recommend booking a guided tour. This is a great way to make the most of your time, especially if you're only spending a day or two in Kinderdijk and don't want to get bogged down in logistics. Once you've made it to Kinderdijk, you could follow the foot trails or rent a bicycle from the various vendors around town. Bikes cost around 3 euros per hour, making them a fun and affordable option. Accessibility is no issue and the town is well equipped for wheelchairs and other alternative modes of transport. For kids, there are pathways for scooters and skateboards. There are also boat tours within the town itself that will take you to the various sites that are situated over a few miles. Travelling through the canals is a truly authentic experience and a reminder of water's impact on every decision the townspeople have made over the years. There is no wrong time to visit Kinderdijk. It is open all year round to tourists and has no real on or off season. While quieter in colder months, the scenery is always beautiful. Visiting the site comes at no cost, but touring the museums and pump house costs a fee of between 5 and 10 euros, depending on the number of children and adults in your group. Kinderdijk tickets can be purchased in town at the various sites. If you're an early bird, you won't regret getting up with the sun to experience the full magic of the day ahead, especially because you can take your time visiting the town's offerings. For late risers, the town is spectacular at sunset. However, many of the attractions close by mid-afternoon. Make no mistake, the village is no bustling metropolis, but it is peppered with charming cafes and restaurants where you can grab a bite to eat and make use of the bathroom facilities. There are also various areas to settle in for a packed lunch or picnic, so you can take in the atmosphere around you. Kinderdijk is a wholesome experience for the whole family, with many of the experiences on offer tailored to fascinate both young and old. The tours are fascinating and cater to inquisitive minds by providing insight into the lives of even the youngest villagers and the tasks they had to complete as part of historic Miller families, like laundry and goat minding. You won't regret visiting Kinderdijk, even if you only get to spend a few hours there. With so much to see, you'll be tempted to stay for days, but even if you can't, it's well worth the short travel time from Amsterdam or Rotterdam. Best of all, it won't break the bank.
subscribe to Via Travelers for more great travel tips and details. In the description below, you'll find links to the tours and attractions mentioned in this video. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.